Hi there, it's Mimsy here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a super simple slip cover for this bench. I'm using a medium weight linen. It is from fabric-store.com and I'll put a link to this exact fabric in the description box below if you feel like you wanna use a linen just like this. This is a bench that I've had for years. I picked it up either on the side of the road or at a thrift store, I don't remember. I've had it for so long. It's traveled around my house. I originally made this blue uh, linen slip cover for it with ballet ties around the legs. I love the slip cover but I washed it recently and it shrunk and I could no longer get it on this bench. So now this bench will sit at the foot of my daughter's bed and so I'm making it with this white linen slip cover. The first thing that I'm gonna do is drape this. I like to make my slip covers by draping my fabric on my furniture and I'm gonna make this slip cover with a ruffled edge because my daughter's style is kind of modern farmhouse-ish and she really likes ruffles. Got a couple pillows on her bed that are made out of this same fabric and they're ruffled. So I'm going to line up this selvage edge with the bottom of the bench. I will attach the ruffles right here and I want to make sure that my ruffles start about an inch and a half to two inches above the bottom of my bench. I don't really want to start my ruffles here and go down because then the whole thing gets a little bit long. So I'm going to start my ruffles here and they'll end about right here. Any longer than that and it covers up too much of the leg and it starts to look frumpy like a dress that's just too long. So that's why I'm going to line this up so that it comes right to the bottom of my bench and that'll give me my seam allowance where I want it right about here so that my ruffle will go there to there. That's lined up nice and straight. I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. I'm going to have to cut this back side to make it line up properly. So let me make sure. And this too. So I will cut this edge and bringing it right to the bottom edge of the bench makes it very easy to cut it at the right place. This right there is where you need to be. And I'll cut this side. Let me bring you around. This side of the bench, the fabric is a little bit short here. So I'm going to drag the whole thing down a little bit. Start my ruffle here. Let me make sure the other side is all good. My fabric is a little bit short on fabric, but I'll make it work. Okay, that looks good. So what I'm going to do here so I make sure that I'm nice and straight is I'll pull a thread right here and I have a whole separate video on how to cut your fabric straight, square, and on grain. I'm starting with a piece of fabric here that I've got like just barely enough fabric to make this project work. But if you're gonna go ahead and buy yourself a couple yards of fabric, your very first cut needs to be straight, square, and on grain. So you'll wanna watch that video. I'll link to that cards here so you can start all your projects off on the right foot with a nice square on grain cut. Okay, so I took out a whole length of, that was the selvage over there, so that's a warp thread. So I'll bring it in close so you can see what I mean. Now I can cut straight along there and I know I'm nice and straight. There's the cut and I pulled out that warp thread and you can see how it left an empty warp thread there. And now I can take my scissors and just cut right along that empty spot right there. So now I've got this piece of fabric cut all the same way, all the way around. Now I think what I'll do is I'll press it and then we'll pin the corners. So the important thing is that your fabric is washed and pre-shrunk. I wouldn't be making this if it weren't for my previous fabric being too small now because I, wa I made it, washed it, and now it, it doesn't fit. And one tip, one pro tip is either use spray starch or a spray bottle of water will work just as well as spray starch. When you're using a, a household iron with a steam option, you kind of really don't ever want to put water in there because they don't work well. These irons, even the expensive ones, they always leak and they eventually get rusty inside and then you get orange rusty water coming out of them and they'll stain your fabrics. So it's better just to use them on high heat and have a spray bottle of water on your table and just spritz your piece with water, it'll do the same thing as if you're steaming. Obviously, you want to test it on your fabric first, but 
I would recommend never putting water inside of your iron. I pressed the selvage edge just to make them nice and flat. I've got it back on there and I've got the fabric about right here all the way around. Now, if you were doing this and you had a new piece of fabric, I would go ahead and cut it so it's just even with the bottom all the way around. That way you know it's the same all the way around, but I was a little bit short on fabric. The bottom line is make it the same distance from the bottom of your bench all the way around your whole bench on all sides. Now we can go ahead and pin the corners of the bench and we'll start with this corner here since it's close to the camera. It's really gonna be almost like wrapping a present. You're gonna pull that corner and we're gonna pin it to make it fit around the bench. And just pull it snug so that this lays flat there and it lays a little bit flat there. Not too much, but just a little bit snug. And so the top of my bench is a little bit curved and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of curve this seam around a little bit. So you see that? And I could even go with my pin a little bit more so that I can, I'll know where to really finish that seam. Let me bring you in close so you can see that. Okay, so, and really the more pins you put in, the easier it is gonna be for you to follow the curve, particularly if you're a beginner, you wanna do more pins so that you know you can just sew right along the inside of those pins. And so you see how I did, let me brighten this up just a hair. I pinned straight up and then kind of around the bend here a little bit to the top of this. Now I will sew right off the corner of this, but I'm gonna just gradually bring it around. It's like sewing a dart really, and you're just gonna, bring it around as close to that crease as you can and just gradually bring it off the edge of that crease. I'm going to pin like this on all four corners. Now we'll go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and sew it. I've got my going to go ahead and use my zipper foot to sew because that way I can put my needle to the side of the pins and I can just sew right down the very inside right next to my pin. That way I know for sure I'm sewing exactly where I need to be. And remember we're going to start up here and we're going to kind of curve it in at the top so that that top seam will curve around the top of that bench and make sure that you backstitch. Okay. And now I'll take my pins out. And I do that just because I need to make sure that I'm sewing next to, and so this one, because I put the pins in this way, I'll start at the bottom and follow that curve around to the top. Okay. So now I can go ahead and trim off these corners and then I can serge them or just overlock them. And since I'm here, I'm just gonna zigzag stitch them. All right, so I'll show you up close. Seam kind of curves up and goes off that edge. All right, so now we'll take it to the bench and try it on. One of the things that I forgot to say is that this is, we're reverse pin fitting this, which means we are pin fitting it inside out. So the right side of the fabric is inside against this. The wrong side of the fabric is out. So with a linen, you can't really tell which is the right and which is the wrong. But with a printed fabric, you would obviously wanna make sure that your fabric was face down. And that's the way I do all slip covers unless it's an asymmetrical piece. Then you can't do it that way. So there we go. That's the way it looks. Let me show you around it. And we can press it and kind of press that out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make the ruffle. Sew that on. So I need to make eight feet, nine, 10, 12 feet of ruffle. Means t times two because it's gonna be gathered. So 24 feet of ruffle. So 
now I'm making the ruffle in the top of this long piece of fabric that I've stitched together. And the easiest way that I find to make a ruffle is to hold your top thread between your fingers and just put tension on this top thread as you're sewing. And you'll see as it comes out of the presser foot in your feed dogs that it'll come out of there ruffled because you're putting tension on this thread. So you see that? And the more tension that you put on this top thread, the tighter the ruffle will be. A second way to make a ruffle is to zigzag stitch over the top of some upholstery thread or a strong thread. So just set your machine to the widest possible zigzag and then hold your spool of thread and zigzag over the top of your thread. I've zigzagged all this length. Now I can just pull this and gather it up. Okay, and that makes a very nice ruffle. So if you do it with this method with the upholstery thread and you pull your ruffles every foot or two feet, you don't waste much thread and you don't have to pull all that length at once at the end. It makes it easier to do it as you go. Okay, so my ruffle is all created. I've got it all on my table. I've got my bench on the table and I have my slip cover body on the bench inside out. So the seams are out and I've made sure that it's all level all the way around. And I'm gonna start pinning in this corner and we're gonna pin this inside out. So the correct side is the same as this inside out. And we're gonna pin this together like this. So I'm gonna put my raw edges together. We're not gonna pin it just like that. We're gonna pin right side to, to right side. So I'm sitting here in my daughter's room. This is the final resting place of this bench. And somehow I lost the footage of me sewing the ruffle onto the body of the slip cover. I'm just gonna walk you through that. It's super simple. Once you've pinned it on, then all you do is take it to your sewing machine and run a straight stitch right across the top of your ruffles. And then I overlocked it with a zigzag stitch. You could also serge that, but it does get pretty thick. You probably wouldn't wanna put it through your serger and actually cut it because it does get thick, but you could serge that. You could cut it with your scissors nice and straight and then serge that. That's how the seam looks. And I did overlock stitch that, which is important because this is surely gonna be washed quite a bit. Here is her duvet cover that I made a while back with this ribbon trim. And then if you'd like to see how I made this storage bed with two dressers. You can click that link in the cards above. There's the two ruffled pillows. You can look at that video next.